Neil Ferguson, what do you make of the unfolding crisis in the Middle East and North Africa and Libya in particular? Well, I think I'm a little bit of an outlier here because many people in the Western media leapt to the conclusion that this was a kind of 1989-style uh, democratic revolution. Uh, and uh, there certainly were elements of that in, in Egypt. But my position has been from the outset uh, that the least likely outcome of these events Events is that a large part of North Africa and the Middle East will become Western-style democracy. Uh, a much more likely outcome, in my view, is that we will see either the restoration of military rule in these countries uh, or civil war, uh, or conceivably an Islamist uh, takeover via the ballot box or via the use of force. Th those are more likely scenarios for me because if you look at Egypt, uh, or indeed for that matter, uh, Libya, not to mention Yemen and some of the other countries that have been affected by large-scale demonstrations, they don't have much in common with Poland uh, or Czechoslovakia in 1989. Uh, they're actually closer in many ways to, to Pakistan. Uh, and it's quite hard for countries like that, where there's high levels of illiteracy, very youthful population with 20% uh, of the, uh, the population aged between 15 and 24, uh, high food prices and so forth, to make a transition to the kind of political systems we have evolved over centuries in the West. So I'm relatively pessimistic and I would be very surprised if we saw a happy ever after scenario of the sort that we did see in Central and Eastern Europe back in 89. As a historian and having looked at civilization across a very large span, we come back to one thing, oil. In your view, do you think the price, because of this turmoil and, and civil unrest, could spike to, uh, to derail the global economy? If we have a continuation of what is going on right now in Libya, of, of civil war and potentially even of cross-border conflict, which is a really big worry uh, if you talk to the Israelis. I and mean, they've been warning for some considerable time that something like this could happen. And their point is that if you do get revolutionary events in Egypt and the Muslim Brotherhood end up on top, then the next thing you know, uh, Egypt will be reverting to its old pre-Sadat position of hostility towards, towards Israel. So the worry is that not only civil war in Libya, but ultimately maybe even cross-border wars in the region uh, break out. And if that happens, then of course, we're going to see oil soaring skywards. Uh, nearer to $200 a barrel than, than 100 and, and that would be as, as big a kick uh, to the U.S. economy uh, as well as to the rest of the world's economy uh, as anything that happened in the 1970s. And right now, the conflict is not just about oil. The great struggle, it seems to me, if one looks at the world today, is a struggle over a whole range of commodities, including things most of your viewers probably haven't even heard of, like indium, which is absolutely crucial, rare earth that you need if you want to make mobile phones work, uh, or copper, which uh, is absolutely crucial for the electrification uh, of Asian economies. So it's not just about oil, it's about a whole range of commodities, including, of course, food. One reason these revolutions broke out was that food prices basically doubled. If you do that in a low-income country, then people very quickly take to the streets. Hello everyone, welcome to Global Government News. Today is Thursday, March 3rd, 2011, and I'm Darko. Welcome everyone to this news bulletin. Uh, please visit my website, www.ggnonline.com. That's ggnonline.com. I haven't posted a new poll yet, but uh, if you haven't seen the results as far as the government being shut down, most of the people said it's very likely, although it looks like it's not going to happen. Uh, uh, one of the features I wanted to show in my uh, on my website here is if you want to follow me on Facebook, uh, you can go down here to the bottom and allow you to do that. And um, also you can uh, join my website. I have 16 followers right now. And um, also you can subscribe down here by entering your email address. So all the posts will go to your email. All right, um, we're going to start with the economy here. And uh, then we'll move into uh, Middle East, War on Terror, or Reign of Terror as I call it and then uh, move into eugenics. Uh, this first one up is stocks, U.S. stocks rallied Dow post bi uh, best gain in three months. Says U.S. stocks rallied on Thursday with the Dow Jones Industrial Average posting its best and largest gain since uh, December 1st as investors reacted positively to a drop in weekly jobless claims and retreat in oil prices. And uh, the retreat in oil prices is due to what? Um, 
uh, supposedly there's talks going on with Libya and that's everything's going to be good. Well, I, I'm not really sure of that, but uh, either way, it says drop in jobless claims, and we'll get to that as well. And my reasoning for that, U.S. stocks rally on oil's dip and job data, euro uh, is up. It says Wall Street scored its best one-day rally in three months on Thursday due to pullback in oil prices and upbeat labor market data, while the euro jumped on the European Central Bank's president's inflation warning. Then stocks rise most this year on, on economy, euro gains. And then here we go. This is probably the biggest story I have for, uh, for the economy, why the dollar's reign is near an end and I've been talking about this this will probably or most likely be the culmination to this uh, uh, final transition uh, for this new economic order uh, that these uh, financial globalist elites keep calling for uh, it basically uh, get rid of the dollar as the main reserve currency and uh, that along with the oil crisis I believe is all staged and designed and um, you know, only the powers that be really know uh, what's going to come out of it. So we're just kind of here, uh, spectators, watching this, watching this movie play out before us, right? And it says, for decades, the dollar has served as the world's main reserve currency, but argues Barry uh, Eichengreen, it will soon have to share that role. Here's why and what it will mean for international markets and companies. So it says here, I believe that in the next 10 years, we're going to see a profound shift towards a world in which several currencies compete for dominance. The, we have this little chart here, money leaders, currency, shares of global foreign exchange transactions in 2010, U.S. dollar, 84 percent, euro, almost 40 percent, yen, 20 percent, British pound, uh, almost 13 percent, Australian dollar, 7.6 percent, the Swiss franc at 6.5, and the Canadian dollar, 5.3 percent. And uh, we're going to keep moving here. All the links will be posted as usual in the video description, so you can check those out. Um, says here Simon Black quote the market is telling us that the dollar is finished so it says there's a major shift occurring right now in the financial markets and it says sure the food and freedom riots that are spreading across the uh, globe are a major indicator that civil unrest follows very closely behind resource shortages and economic turmoil but there's something else that I've noticed recently it's a sea change in the financial system gold falls 1.5 percent on ECB rate talk peace plan gold fell 1.5 percent on Thursday snapping a four-day rally to record highs on news of the Venezuelan proposal to end turmoil in Libya as the European Central Bank warned it could soon raise interest rates. Then moving on to commodities, looks like Brent crude uh, futures were down a dollar fifty, trading at a dollar and fourteen a barrel. And then we move down here to uh, cocoa futures were uh, up fifty dollars. And then we have coffee up five dollars and corn futures up fifteen dollars, cotton up five dollars, wheat up twelve dollars. Uh, sugar was up uh, what 20 cents soybeans up almost $20 uh, oats up $4 and uh, live cattle futures up 70 cents so uh, treasuries treasuries fall in, as inflation linked securities signal faster price gains now we have auto sales increase in the US by 27 percent last month uh, oil settles at two and a half year high on Libya violence oil rises above US uh, one hundred and two dollars as fighting escalates in Libya US inventories drop and it says here Pakistan hikes oil prices and fueling anger uh, it says here Pakistan hiked oil prices by nine point nine percent Tuesday a move that threatens the stability of the fragile US allied civilian government at a time of economic turmoil in the impoverished country and then it says here Saudi Arabia vows to raise oil output and um, I remember watching a video uh, I can't remember his name right now. Uh, I think it's Jones, though. He's a big investor. And um, he was talking about how Saudi Arabia can't even... They said last time when uh, Bush was president that they were going to raise the output of oil, and they couldn't do it because they don't have it. So I wouldn't... Uh, I wouldn't wait for that to happen. Oil falls on profit-taking. Libya peace plan uh, eyed. Here we go. Food prices reach record high. World food prices rose 2.2% in February from the previous month to a record peak. The United Nations food body said Thursday as it warned that volatility in oil markets could push prices even higher. Then we have food prices hit new record. Food prices are likely to carry on climbing all year in Britain as figures indicated that global food prices had hit a new record high. So um, here we go. Food uh, Prices of whole 
melt powder hit a record. This is from the People's Daily Online. Whole melt powder prices surged to a record amid continued strong demand from China and concerns that higher input and feed costs may curb supply. Then we have here in Shanghai, Shanghai home sales declined in February. Sales of residential property in Shanghai hit the lowest point in February since 2006, according to a survey released on Tuesday. And then we have this, the 23 governments that could get crushed by food uh, price inflation. And we're going to check those out right now. First one up is Venezuela. And it says here, the uh, food as a percentage of total household consumption is 32%. Then we have Vietnam at number 24. It says food as a percentage of total household consumption, 50%. And then uh, it says here, Latvia, and they're at 34%. Uh, China already experiencing protests, food as a percentage of total household consumption, 39%. Then India is at 50%. Uh, Ukraine is at 61%. And then we have here Bulgaria, uh, almost 50%. Uh, Tunisia, 36%, a little lower. Dominican Republic at 38 uh, Libya at 37 And then uh, it looks like we have Pakistan at 47%. Then uh, Kenya, Philippines, uh, Romania at almost 50%, Angola, Azerbaijan 60%, Hong Kong only 25%, uh, Sudan 52%, kind of high, Sri Lanka, uh, Egypt at almost 50%, Lebanon 34%, almost finished here, Nigeria 73%. Wow, dude, that's crazy. Algeria 53%, and Morocco 63%, Bangladesh 53%. And uh, why is that important? Well, because when food prices spike, I mean, these people are going to be crushed uh, big time. It says here, Capital Land says moves unlikely to lower prices. CEO of Developers China Unit says limits on home purchases won't reduce prices, risk of creating pent-up demand. The chief executive property developer Capital Land China's unit said Tuesday that the country's latest measures to cool property sector, including restrictions on home purchases and reduced land supply for private development, will most likely result in pent-up demand rather than lowering, pr or lowering prices. And... Um, that's, uh, of course, uh, what uh, China was doing uh, recently with their new law that passed. Regulators pushed 20% down payments on homes. Banking regulators are pushing for mortgage uh, lending rules that require homeowners to make minimum 20% down payments on loans classified as lower risk, according to people familiar with the matter. Then housing prices fall at fastest pace for a year. The fastest fall in U.K. housing prices in more than a year in February was tampered by a uh, surge in demand from potential buyers. Uh, U.S. officials fighting to save homeowner aid as lawmakers fault failures of administration officials launched a campaign to preserve as much as they can the $50 billion in foreclosure prevention aid for homeowners amid growing criticisms from both Republicans and Democrats. Quote, it's very important to continue these programs given how difficult the housing market is right now. But uh, the Republicans pretty much go down, uh, go on and say that uh, uh, that the program was not a success and it was a failure. And uh, I believe this is the program that was to help people out during the housing crisis. And uh, there was a lot of rules and a lot of uh, 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 little hidden stipulations in which people thought they were going to get aid and they didn't, and they really needed it. So requests for unemployment benefits fall for third times in four weeks. The number of people requesting unemployment benefits last week plunged to nearly three-time year low, bolstering the likelihood that companies will increase the pace of hiring this year. Well, no, that doesn't really say anything. It just says that people, that uh, there was less people filing for unemployment. Maybe they can't file for it anymore. Maybe they're not allowed to file for it anymore. Or maybe they were kicked off, so they can't refile again. So it doesn't mean that there's more people that are having jobs, it just means that less people are filing for unemployment. So uh, you just have to be aware of those numbers, the number uh, crunching that they do. Uh, jobless claims drop, so there's that. Then uh, new job hirings in U.S. private sector to the tune of 217,000 ADP. So and it's ahead of the federal government's monthly jobs report. Uh, private payroll processing firm announced that the U.S. private sector hired 217 workers. So they did hire some workers, so that's good, I guess. Auto sales increased in the U.S. by 27% last month, and shoppers emerged in February. Shoppers had 
Spring and their step during February with retail sales for the month showing solid spending. And finishing up, U.S. service industries grow at fastest pace since 2005 as recovery widens. So the recovery is here. Now it's a restructuring. Work harder for less. This is GGN and I'm Darko. Thank you.